All right, guys, so the wheel situation is almost fixed. I just got the other wheel delivered, unpackaged. It's right in here. Man, do they look huge without having a tire on them. But they sent me the other wheel. Um, I'm gonna verify fitment, take them to the shop tomorrow, take this wheel, mark that little piece of tape so I know which one it was. And then finally, this setup will be going on this truck after little bit longer of a wait than I wanted but at least it's happening now so just wanted to keep you guys in the loop and that truck's about to look a lot different well we are headed to the big city well kind of the big city we're going to Joplin Missouri to get try to get this wheel entire situation figured out I called about five shops one place is willing to try it another place says they can do it um, just got to try to get in there and, and get it taken care of Got all the wheels and tires in the back of the truck. Um, but also something pretty interesting I wanted to show you guys is what I saw when I started my truck. See that nifty little light right there on the dash? And how the truck only has 1,500 miles and there's an engine light on? I don't know what it's from, but I think it's kind of weird that a brand new truck has an engine light on. But I guess there's so many sensors on, those th on these things that you know, things can happen, but so far it sounds fine sitting here idling, runs fine, but I guess maybe we'll find out later in this video or another one what that is or if it just goes away on its own, but we we're about to head that way to get this taken care of and this truck is going to be looking different. Finally made it down to Joplin at Purcell Tire is a place that could get me in to do it. Only people that really wanted to touch it, they were struggling to get it off in here. Um, didn't really want much recording going on in the shop, so I can understand that. But um, yeah, I think they're gonna get it whipped up for us and maybe put on this truck. So uh, can't wait to get them on there and see what this baby looks like. So a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news. We are at a new place, Reeves Tire and Auto in Jompin, Missouri. The other shop could not get the tire to reseat and I've heard him pop off that cheetah back there in the shop about 15 times trying to get it here. So. We'll see if they can figure it out if they can't. I don't really know what we're going to do to get that thing reseated. So, uh, not the best experience so far, but we'll see what happens. Well, so far the situation is not good with the wheel and tire. I drove down here to Joplin thinking a tire shop would be able to do it, which I don't understand really why they can't, what the deal is. Um, the tire that I need put on the correct wheel is done, but I went to two other shops. They weren't able to seat it. I got one other guy I'm going to try to go to back in my town. And then my last resort is doing it myself in my garage with some flammable stuff to get that baby to seat because no one else can do it. And I'm tired of not having it done. So I will figure it out one way or the other and I will keep you all informed. So there she goes. Finally got a shop in Joplin to get the wheel and tire set up on. Torque performance. They've done great. They've even got me in to get these slapped on before lunchtime. So a big shout out to them. And if you're ever in Joplin and need something done, hit them up. Okay, one more clip I wanted to throw in this video is what I did cutting wise and what I removed on this truck to get these 14 wides to fit. As I said, as we walk up here, um, I'll take a look at our torsion keys. You can see right up there, that little bolt. If it's all the way maxed out, that means your keys are maxed out. So that's about the gap that you have. It's not a lot, but it's also not maxed out. So the ride quality is still decent. And then and then right here we take a look. I know it's pretty dark in here, but there's a zip tie that runs across right here. Where these two holes are, those went into a bracket that's behind that liner. So you basically pull this liner out 
and take that bracket out from behind it. Pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. It gives you a ton of room to pull this back where, uh, where it won't rub when you turn. Took the mud flap off, obviously you can tell right there. And then I cut this just a little bit. And then I cut the very inside edge of this piece of plastic right there so it doesn't catch. And then on the front, basically the same thing. Like I said, it's super dark, but there's a zip tie right here, a hole there and a hole there. Those two holes go into a bracket that's mounted up here. Take the bolts out, pull your liner back, take this bracket out, and then that gives you room to suck this way, way up there. That way your tire doesn't rub on it. And then as we look at the bumper, you can see it's dirty as all get out and gross out here. But you can see I basically cut it at an angle straight up. Didn't have to cut off much of the bumper, but what I did do is I came on the inside here and cut that back. That way the tire didn't hit on it. So that's basically the cutting you have to do. It doesn't take a whole lot. Um, looking at this side, you have the exact same thing just on the other side. Maybe a little better lighting. You're getting rid of this inner lip of this bumper. You can see right there that that's gone. That way the tire can get by there. It doesn't hit on anything. So that's basically what you can expect whenever you're doing 24 by 14s on, on 33s, slightly turned up keys. Um, yeah, it goes down the road pretty good. I really like the looks of the truck. Let me know what you guys think or if anyone uh, has done this, didn't like the way it turned out, went ahead and spent the money and did the torsion key kit, put upper control arms on it and stuff like that. Because uh, in the future, I may consider doing that. And if that gives you more clearance, maybe we would do 16 wides or something like that. But for now, this is what we have. Some things coming in the future on this truck. I know I said I was going to have these tail lights painted by our guy, but uh, ended up finding a fairly cheap set of tail lights. Well, cheap as in I can sell these stock ones and still probably come out ahead. So that's one small mod I'm going to do to the truck. Um, I don't have a lot of other plans for it as of right now. We're, I guess one more thing is we're having a, a hitch built that will work with the multi-pro tailgate. That way when you put it down, it doesn't slam into your hitch because that's just frustrating as all get out. If, if Even if you, you're not gonna do it, someone else may come by and open your tailgate and do it. So that's what's, that's what's real frustrating about it. Um, but that's what we've done so far to it. The truck's looking pretty sweet. Um, let me know if you guys would do something different might try some different things just to you know show some different options the the things you could do peak curiosity on what chrome wheels would look like on what something not as wide would look like and if we can find a setup that we can buy and turn around and resell and not really lose anything on it we may just slap them on there so you can see what it looks like that way you know what to go with on your truck so for now we're going to let you go and i hope you enjoyed it i hope this video was helpful for any of you wanting to run 14 wides on your pretty much stock uh, high country 2500 hd um i didn't max out the keys so i still have a little bit of rake on this truck i know a lot of people hate it when the back end's lower if you're going to be pulling stuff so um with the cutting that i did what i showed everyone that's about what you can do um sometimes when you still hit a bump and your wheels turn going into like a drive through or something it, they'll still rub just a little bit but it's really nothing that's going to damage anything um, also in this video, um, we see the challenge of getting a wheel mounted when you live in the middle of nowhere, a tire mounted on a wheel when you get sent the wrong thing. I'm still working with custom offsets, trying to find out what they're going to do um, to reimburse me. I ended up investing, I don't know, pushing 10 hours of time and travel and going to different shops and calling different people, trying to figure it out. At one point, they offered for me to ship the wheel back to them. And then I asked them for a shipping label and they said, we're not going to do that. Try to find a shop yourself. I was like, I've already done that, but I can try again as long as you're going to reimburse me. So I'm really interested to see what they do. Um, I'm not knocking custom offsets at all. I know things happen and it just so happens I live in the middle of nowhere that doesn't have a place that um, can mount something like that. So I, I don't know why it was so hard to get a shop to do it, but let's just say it wasn't easy trying to track down. A place that would get it done and do it and, and figure it out for me but uh, like i said another shout out to torque performance they're in joplin if you're ever there need to have anything done they're they're very helpful very knowledgeable so you can you can go to them if you live in the area um and i'll be having another video come up about kind of what custom offsets ends up doing 
And then whenever we do that, I'll try to get this truck cleaned up and maybe get some rollers for you guys to see kind of what it looks like going down the road. It was just gross. It was dirty today and we got bad weather coming in tomorrow. So that's basically where we're going to leave this video at. I hope you've enjoyed um, the different mods I've done to this truck so far. I do have a few coming in the future, so look forward to sharing that with you in the next video. But until then, we'll catch up with you next time.